In this video, we're going to be looking at a scene from The Crown and pulling out some useful words and phrases in context, looking at what these words and phrases mean and how they are used, very importantly. It's a good way to learn, actually. We see how they're used, and then we can apply that more easily. If you have any questions as we go, pop those in the comments. And if you enjoy the video, if you get something out of it, don't forget to hit the like button and maybe subscribe as well. Now, let's get into it. Listen carefully. Turn on your ears. We're going to be picking out these from context, right? So you have to pay careful attention. Try to fit them into the overall context and guess the meaning. And if you want to practice, you can try to make your own sentences using that word or phrase. And also think about using ChatGPT to try it out. You could ask for a few example sentences and then ask ChatGPT if they're correct, right? Get example sentences or provide example sentences. You can do both. You can practice both with ChatGPT. Okay. So listen carefully. I should mention I was several places along the table. All right, I think the volume is a little low, so I'm turning it up all the way. Let's crank it. Well, it's possible yes. that I misheard. Was that she found Buckingham Palace second rate, dilapidated, and sad, like a neglected provincial hotel. Okay, what's going on? My cat is meow, making weird noises. I think she's sleeping and having a strange dream. I'm hearing like a. was that she found Buckingham Palace second rate, dilapidated, and sad. Okay, so we've got two interesting words here. Second rate, dilapidated, and sad. So we're going to look at second rate, and you're also going to hear dilapidated, neglected. Okay, so we're going to look at both of these. Listen carefully one more time was that she found Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is where is the traditional home of the British royal family, Buckingham Palace. You probably know that. Why do I need to tell you that? Okay, not salad. Was that she found Buckingham Palace second rate, dilapidated and sad. So the last word there is sad, not salad. Second rate, dilapidated. And again, we're going to look at neglected too. So if something is second rate, it's not close to the best. It's below average, perhaps. If you want to not insult something, but say that the quality isn't great, you say it's kind of second rate. We often use second rate when we want to comment on something being not as good as another thing. Sort of a second rate app. That means there are other apps that are similar that are way better. And so it's not in that category. It's sort of a secondary category of so-so apps, right? Well, Buckingham Palace is eh, maybe compared to other palaces, I don't know, but compared to maybe their expectations of what great would be Buckingham Palace's Second rate. And Buckingham Palace, second rate, dilapidated and sad. Okay, now we have dilapidated. And dilapidated means broken down. It is falling apart. It is collapsing. Now, you would use this for usually physical things. So, would you say that your, I don't know, your heart is dilapidated or something like that. That's a bit odd to say that your mind is dilapidated. Some people might say that uh, Joe Biden's mind is dilapidated. And eh, usually people are going to choose other words. So for physical structures, it's very common to use dilapidated rather than for personal things, personalities, pers character traits. Right, often we're describing something physical or the state of something, the state of a city, the downtown area of San Francisco is 
deeply dilapidated and neglected. Neglected means that it's dilapidated because no one is maintaining it, because no one is paying attention to it, because no one is putting the effort in to make sure it isn't dilapidated. Dilapidatedness, that's not a word, happens over time due to neglect. So you could say that neglect causes dilapidation, particularly if we're talking about physical spaces, buildings, houses, living rooms, shacks, shanties, downtown areas, whole countries perhaps, and sometimes other things. I've heard an economy described as dilapidated. It's just less common than talking about someone's backyard or someone's house. Like a neglected provincial hotel. Yeah, okay. but... A neglected provincial hotel. So neglected being the cause of the dilapidation. Um, neglected, again, just means you're not paying attention to it. You're not really caring about it. Okay? That's a, that's a good screen grab there. One came away with a sense of a tired institution. Listen to came away with. Yeah, and that one came away with a sense of tell. Yeah, and that one came away with a sense of a tired institution. One came away with a sense of a tired institution. Now, why are they saying one instead of he or she? Well, one is a somewhat formal sounding impersonal pronoun. It's a pronoun used to replace a person, but instead of saying they or you, there's something called the impersonal you, right? If you want to be successful, you need to. Now, I might be talking to you, 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 the personal you, or I might be using you impersonally to talk about anyone who fits the description of someone who wants to, right? So the you there, you there is the impersonal you. Well, one is another impersonal you if one wants to, except we don't use one as often as you or sometimes they because you right? If they want to do something, they should. One sounds formal. It often feels too formal. And so a lot of people aren't comfortable using it on a regular basis because of that feeling of formality that comes with it. If one wants to, one comes away with. So if you come away with something, you could have something physical. Yes, but you could also come away with an impression a feeling. I came away from that meeting with a sense of optimism, optimism, I came away from that, that event or I came away with this feeling of doom that we're all going to be living in a AI fueled dystopia within the next five years. Well, okay. What did you come away with? It could be your insights, your impression, your feeling, right? Usually when you experience something, you experience an event, a place, a meeting, uh, anytime you have an experience somewhere and you want to describe your impression from that, your learning from that, right? I came away with, for example, a course. Luke, your ChatGPT writing course was really great. I came away with a lot of powerful prompts and great insights about how to use ChatGPT to create great writing. I came away with those things, right? Okay, so that's how we're usually using it. And that one came away with a sense of a tired institution. A tired institution. And an institution here is, you could have an institution that is like an academy or a university, right? Or a sort of very large organization that is responsible or working on a specific thing. But an institution in this case being a structure in society. This institution being the royal family, which was very different maybe 500 years ago or 300 years ago where kings and queens actually had real power and the king of england was a very powerful person who could do a lot of things and make decisions and now one comes away with the the feeling that the institution of the monarchy of the royal family of england the um the what are they called the, 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 I'm blanking on the word. What are they? They're the, they're the, the Win, Win, Windsor? What is the word? I'm blanking on the word. 
I'm blanking on the word. But that would be the institution of the royal family of the UK, right? And if it's a tired institution, they're sort of irrelevant. They're bogged down by traditions. It's kind of meaningless. What's the point? People are asking that question. What is the point of the royal family, right? Okay, we're going to be looking at overheard next, so let's keep going. Without a place in the modern world. I see. And did she have anything to say about me? Did she have anything to say about me? I was at the other end of the table. I he doesn't want to say it because I think they have a close relationship. So he has to share negative feedback with someone that he doesn't want to share negative feedback with. By the way, I was when I was watching this, I this is what I noticed. This is a guy on Saturday Night Live who uh, looks exactly like this guy, and I thought it was him, but it's not. But the words I think I overheard were. The words I think I overheard were. But the words I think I overheard were. So if you overhear something, you maybe weren't the intended target of those words. You're not the intended recipient of those words. You're overhearing those words. They're not meant for you, but other people are talking over there and I, eh, I caught something. So I overheard your conversation. I overheard that you were talking about. I happened to overhear what you were saying about. Then maybe you would interject. You would mention something. Or when you're talking about it later, as I was walking, I overheard two people talking about and then explain what that was. But again, if you say overheard, that means you weren't the one that was supposed to hear it. It wasn't for you. The words I think I overheard were... In our head of state, we had head of state. Uh, it's like the uh, head of the um, country. A middle-aged woman, so incurious, unintelligent, and unremarkable. Unremarkable. So let's listen to this one next. Unintelligent and unremarkable. Britain's new reduced place in the world, urgent and unremarkable. Unremarkable, unintelligent. So what's the difference between unintelligent and unremarkable? Well, they are a little different, right? Because you could be remarkable and unintelligent. <laughs> a remarkable person would be someone who's very interesting, who's impressive in some specific way. But it doesn't say in specifically what way. Maybe very interesting. Maybe a very good artist, right? Maybe an amazing dancer. Exceptional, extraordinary. Those are similar words to remarkable. Unremarkable is basically very plain, completely uninteresting, nothing special going on. Basically a, a, a zero in terms of, what, what do you remember about that person? I, uh, uh, nothing. Very unremarkable. So it's in some ways it is an insult, right? But sometimes we use unremarkable if we're talking about nothing bad happened. If something bad could go wrong and it doesn't, it was a pretty unremarkable Tuesday afternoon. That's not necessarily an insult. That's not saying anything bad about Tuesday afternoon. It was a relatively unremarkable Tuesday afternoon means nothing bad happened. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I was just trying to avoid bad things. I thought something could go wrong, but unfortunately, Fortunately, it was a relatively unremarkable Tuesday afternoon. Oh, oh, nice. But if you're an unremarkable person, in this case, it is an insult. Like, boring, dumb. I'm not saying this about the Queen. Please don't come after me on that. I don't know. But that's what, that's what he overheard, right? Liz is unremarkable, apparently. Unintelligent and unremarkable. Yeah, I mean, this is the Queen's English. This is sort of formal Southern English 
this is a southern accent. That Britain's new reduced place in the world was not a surprise, but new reduced place in the world, by the way. Inevitability, urgent, and unremarkable. That Britain's new reduced place in the world was not a surprise, but an inevitability. Britain's new reduced place in the world was not a surprise, but an inevitability. An inevitability, what is that? An inevitability is something that was bound to happen or is bound to happen. It's not something you can avoid. We don't know maybe when it's going to happen. That's why we say it's an inevitability. It's an, an, an inevitability. Say that 10 times fast. An inevitability, an inevitability, an inevitability. That's tough. This is something that will happen not avoidable, but we're not specifying when. That's the key, right? There's a certainty about it. It's like there's a there's a a rock rolling down a hill, and man, that's not such a great example. There's a rock sitting on a cliff, and every year the cliff sinks a little bit under the weight of the rock. So it's an inevitability that the rock will eventually fall. It's an inevitability. Adjective form, inevitable. It's inevitable. The rock is going to fall. When? I don't know. Five years, 10 years, 100 years. I don't know when it's going to happen, right? It's inevitable that the British Empire was going to have a reduced place in the world. It used to be this powerful empire. The sun never set on the British Empire. Well... Now, after World War II, it has a reduced place in the world. I believe this is happening after World War II. That's the idea. Reduced place in the world was not a surprise, but an inevitability. Sorry, Queen. Hard to hear. She does not like to hear that. But anyway, so we talked about second rate. We talked about dilapidated. We talked about uh, we talked about neglected or neglect. We talked about coming away with something, right? We we talked about overhearing something, uh, overhearing. We talked about an institution, right? And unremarkable and inevitability or inevitable. Okay. Try to use these in sentences. That's the only way that you can actually remember them. Try to. Next time you're talking about something, see if you can include them in a natural way. Give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also, get a free course, Natural English Conversations, in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.